Alright, hi there guys, sorry about that, we're a little bit late uh, coming up on our descent now because for some reason we, the route discontinuated itself at Etita. So very quickly do that and just say temporary insert, that should then fix the top of descent issue, hopefully. No, we're definitely, we've, got, we've sailed straight through it, that's why we don't go AFK. So scroll the altitude down about 12,000 feet, which is a nice kind of interim. And left click. Descent. The aircraft's now going to fly a descent. Radar tilt. Set below. Oop. Too much spoiler. I want about half spoiler. There we go. And that's just going to bring us down a little bit steeper. Because uh, I've screwed it up a bit. And we're a little bit late in the descent phase. We're only about 2,000 feet above where we should be, so it's, it does sound like a large amount, but it really isn't. Um, let me just mute that, because that's about the, th like the third video in the last three days where it's gone off. Okay, so a few more things I'm actually going to cover in this video before we go at the more advanced stage. Uh, those of you with low-powered PCs, and even me on occasion, will n will have noticed that the aircraft has a habit of going into, like, just do crazy oscillation stuff when you get to a low FPS. Now, the way to solve that is to hit return, and then very quickly go options, fly, I mean, it's aircraft, return, aircraft, and then hit fly by wire off. Do that as quickly as you can. Because the fly by wire system is what's causing the, the bounciness. The, re the aircraft itself is absolutely fine, it's just the fly by wire system. It's just going to show you the arrival into Dubai is a bit of a chicane, as, as you see. It brings us quite close in, then back out, then back in. That's why we're so close to the coastline and, and so high up. And can I just say this is a glorious sunrise? Uh, it's about 5 a.m. at the minute, I think, local time. We'll hit Perf now, and we can actually just look at the approach phase. Now, temperature in Dubai is 25, Q and H is 1010, winds are calm, so I'll just put that at 00 slash 00. The Dubai transition altitude, that's a good question, I'll just quickly check that, is. Help Lido, where do you put these things out again? Um, do, 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 do. Two seconds, folks. Transition altitude 13,000. So that's flight level 130. But that's the wrong format, of course it is. So it's instead of typing flight level, we have to just type 13,000. Now, VAPP is the speed wheel bug on final approach, which is 146 knots with the VLS of 141. Now decision altitude coming off an ILS approach to runway 1 to right because it changed the, the runway we're landing on for it to be a quicker vacate uh, will be 100 feet because it's a Category 2 ILS system we'll be using and I'll be disconnecting it at a thousand the autopilot, autopilot at a thousand and hand flying it visually the second I see the runway. Um, there we go, radio. So differences are here. Barometric uses this altitude gauge here and it's above sea level. Particularly handy if you're flying over rocky terrain or you're on an all-precision approach. But we use radar altimeter on ILS approaches. There we go, we're on profile now, see? That's how quickly we did it. Um, so yeah, particularly handy if you're on ILS approaches and precise maneuvers like that. Now what we can do is we can bring the, the altitude gauge down to 2,000 feet, which is our uh, intercept point, I do believe. You can actually see Dubai out in front of us there. That's the, uh, I believe that's the palm tree island there. And over that way, that, that's, yeah, that's the palm tree one. And I believe that one there is a map of the world. Split up into loads of little areas uh, like that you can buy to put your own uh, villa on. So the uh, first officer just changed our 
bar barrel pressure settings because you've gone through transition altitude. You'll notice the aircraft is now going to is now reducing its descent, right? And in the next couple of moments, it's going to start slowing us down quite rapidly to be at 250 knots below 10,000 feet. Next thing it's done, or the crew's done, Have the crew done this? Are they talking? I can't actually tell because I took the headset off though. But the um, uh, the ILS frequency is now tuned, which is 110.10, and that'll be on both sides, I imagine. Yes, it is 110.10. Uh, the aircraft does this automatically. Some aircraft don't. Some aircraft do. Uh, it depends on the aircraft. We're now slowing down to 230 knots for Rulam, which is 6.3 miles away. I'm just going to zoom in a bit to about 40 miles. Or yeah, about 40 miles. That'll do. So you can see what we're doing. We're just chicaning our way into Dubai. Uh, landing on runway one two left. So I must have had one two right bug before, but you can just about make out the map of the world there, and put the Palm Islands over that way. No, that's Palm Islands. So th I'm confused. I've confused myself. Two seconds. So that's the Palm Island, which you can see from space, and I believe that one's the map of the world, but I'm I'm not 100% sure now. It'll be a bit more obvious when we get closer in. You'll also notice a massive FPS drop as the sim tries to load uh, the Dubai scenery in, because I'm using Flag Tampa's Dubai. So, I'm, I'm, as I say, I've, I've boiled this down to the very core add-ons. Uh, the only ones I'm using are this to, are, is, is to prettify the sim. I'm not using anything to help me fly. I'm just doing it to, as I say, prettify is the word I use. And it's just to make the whole thing look nicer. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take over manual airspeed controller, which I'll do by doing that, and then I can do things without upsetting the balance of the aircraft. Things like pulling the speed to 230 knots precisely, which fairly shortly will allow me to engage, to drop flaps down, and things like that. As I say, we're descending slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. Um, just got a lot of spot. You can see the aircraft is starting to bounce there, and that's because we're approaching Dubai, the Dubai scenery. I can also turn the logo light off because it's daytime now, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, a few things I was using, but sadly we've dropped too low for the contrails now. Actually, I wonder if I can get contrails. If, ah, no, there's no point. If I change the weather, I probably could get the aircraft to make some contrails for us, but there's no point. Uh, as I say, I'm using the, also using the FSFX packages, the immersion pack, which I really recommend. It's worth every single penny. I uh, I got I was reviewing it for the magazine I work for, and I, I really like it. You've got to have FSUIPC installed for it to work, though. And I, I liked it so much, I've bought the uh, immersion pack for the uh, NGX. I haven't actually flown it yet, so I can't tell you anything about how that one works. So you can see the aircraft, as I said, it's autopilot. I'm fully hands off at this stage, it's just managing itself. Lights on. Oh, it's doing 10,000 floors. On. Which is literally just to turn landing lights on and passenger signs on. Um, I'll also start the APU now, because I want to do a single engine taxiing, which is a little bit advanced, but I want to show you how to do that. Taxiing the aircraft is pretty basic, but the uh, doing single engine taxi is pretty good fun. It's a very, very square approach, this one. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to get rid of 421, which will make it quite a steep turn, but I'll cut the corner off quite nicely. Get rid of 421 and 420 and take us all the way to Almut. Four two one. Four twenty. Insert. And more drag. Quick, hoy the hoy the anchors out. 
you can see I've just cut the corner off there because uh, again under the circumstances it's a pretty dead uh, piece of airspace right now because there is no AI I don't run AI I don't like running AI packages they just annoy me but by, by their stupidity um, but yeah Yeah, you can see the scenery is loaded in there. What we're f what we're the airport we're facing right now? That there. That is Sharjah. That's actually got no scenery for it. But that's like the low cost hub for uh, Dubai. It's a bit like Stansted is for London. Okay, let's see if I can work this one out. That's Dubai International. Dubai skydives on one of the islands along here as well. That's a pretty cool place to fly from. I, w I want to have a look there in a GA. Uh, you know, I want to do it some night when Dubai is quite busy, and do some uh, low, low, you know, low, flop, low, VF, low level VFR to get through Dubai and go from maybe Dubai skydive to Sharjah. So I think that would be pretty cool. Maybe even do it in a helicopter and land on the, that that hotel. Uh, all right, that's that. There's the Burj Al, Burj Al Arab. That's the biggest skyscraper in the world. So to buy airports, so that's that's it. That's not rendered in fully yet. I've just had a concern that the scenery's not it's going to break again like it did last time. That's the hotel you could land on if you're in a heli. Wow, visibility just disappeared. Hello, visibility. Are you there? Um. Yeah, we just had a rather swift weather change there. I think one of the benefits of having charges straight on the nose is if we would have a fault at this stage, I would just tell the the the, the approach controller that I wanted to divert to charger. Because if it was clearer weather than this, we could see it, and we could just visually position for the approach. The FPS has just dropped to an unbearably low number, but who cares? I don't. Um, this is more about the button pushers involved than yeah. The volumetric lighting isn't working yet. It's not low, not low enough visibility. I think the Sims dropped the visibility as a coping strategy more than anything else. I say, if you've got any questions after this, after you've watched this video, or even now, just drop them in the comment section. Uh, when I see them, if I can find, if I can, uh, if I know the answer, I'll tell you. Uh, if you, you know, if I don't know the answer, I'll try my best to find it for you. Then I'll tell you. And if I can't find it, I'll tell you that. I'll, I, I aim not to ignore any comments. I, I don't think it, since the six months my YouTube channel's been going, I've ignored a single comment. Or not being able to answer a single comment, sorry. Normally it's just people saying, you didn't do that right, you're FBI at the rubbish. And said, well, I don't have a gaming PC, I'm really sorry. I can't afford one. If you can, then, or you want me to get one, please do donate. Um, the donation links are going to be set up again. That's international there. Yeah, that is international, so it's going to bring us down this way. The reason I've taken over manual speed control, by the way, is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the airspeed to about 210 knots for the, uh, for the until we hit the ILS, and then when you hit the ILS at that speed, we can fly what's called the low drag approach, which is a little bit of professionalism, and you basically just slow the aircraft down by just, uh, just sticking flaps out, and it slows down in, in enough time to get down to VRAF before t a safe distance, distance before touchdown. And it's preferential to do approaches like this at, at big airports because a you come in thundering in pretty pretty fast, which keeps the traffic flow going, and you don't make much noise, so you don't thunder in, you you, you know you whisper in, which means anybody living under the approach path hardly hears you come in because you've got no engine power going on. Whereas if you're coming in fully dirtied up, you know with full uh, full ground, so you're full flap out, full gear down, maybe a bit of spoiler to slow you down, then you're going to be making a heck of a lot of engine noise. Uh, if you're know, flying that, flying around, so that's the logic in it, anyway. So what I can do is I can. I had an issue a while ago where the uh, autopilot just froze on me, but that hasn't happened today, luckily. And I'm just going to pull the speed back to 210. You can see it's idled the throttle to bring my speed down enough. I mean that's at least another 40, 30 air miles we've got to fly. I'm going to cut the corner off at the end, I think. That's waypoints 
414 and 46. Actually, we'll get rid of 460 and we'll keep 414. Just going to pop us a little bit above, I think. That's what it'll do. I'll just check when, when we're actually s supposed to intercept the ILS. Yeah, the last the place where we intercept the ILS is Pedov, which is around there somewhere. So I'm going to get rid of DB414 as well. Which will just cut the air distance down significantly. So we, we do have to drop a little bit quicker. I'm actually just going to pump some... I'm going to stick first lump of flap out, which is there. And just pull about half spoiler. Again, it's... The spoiler is difficult to control unless you've got an axis assigned to it, which I unfortunately don't have because I've only got the basic Thrustmaster Hotas at, at the time of filming because my other joystick is a bit kaput. Basically, I had to throw it out today because it just wasn't working at all. And it's now on its way to landfill. It was pretty rubbish then because I've got to say it lasted me about a year. And it was rubbish. Honestly, rubbish. I mean, like, badly bad, bad rubbish. Because the one I'm using now has lasted me five years, and it still works flawlessly. Nothing's broken on it. Whereas the HOTAS, one of the buttons fell off after about two months. So it was masking taped back on, and it actually worked better when it was masking taped than it was when it came from the factory. So unfortunately, I'm not a fan of the uh, Cyborg. Uh, fly stick, which is what I was using. Cause, but the only thing that one did better than this one is it had two throttle axes. So if I was flying the Dash 8, it was significantly easier to just have one assigned to mixture and one assigned to um, general flight controls. I'm just going to zoom this in a bit because the HDR does seem to make that go a little bit out of focus. Now, when we do the turn to final and we get lined up over DB413, is it? 413? Yeah, 413. Um, I'll uh, hit approach, and then the aircraft will start using the localizer for, for uh, lateral guidance. And then when the glide slope comes down enough, it'll use the glide slope. That's the idea, anyway. Approach checklist starts in 4.8 miles, or press it by doing start key one. We'll just press start key one. Now. Start start it by pressing key one. Approach checklist. Checked. Sliding cables. Stowed. Stowed. Yeah, she Checked. slides hers out if, she, if she's in the cruise. Checked. Checked. Error reference. Checked. One zero one zero. One zero one zero. Checked. Check. Check. Flaps one. Okay. Now, in terms of flaps one, you'll notice we've only got slats out at flaps one. Now. Uh, Airbus logic here is that for takeoff you get flaps 1 plus F uh, displaying on that screen. Right now you only get flaps 1 uh, and that's because it only deploys slats uh, for the flaps 1 setting. So you're getting, for the, the, what it basically says is you get flaps 1 plus flaps. So it's slats plus flaps. So it's flaps 1 plus F for takeoff. Local live, check. So we can hit approach mode now. which will bring us to centralise on that. This aircraft defaults to Category 3 operations, even if the airport can't handle that. But that's fine, because it's basically saying, I'm precise enough to do that, but the gear on the ground isn't, so that's where the, the problem lies. Now, as soon as we pick up... Well, yeah, we're on a 17-mile final, so we aren't going to have issues with not picking up the uh, the frequency yet, or the, sorry, the glide path. So not picking up the picking up the flight of the glide path before we're ready for it. The aircraft's still low starving anyway. Um, I'm actually going to set the altitude. Whoa, to two thousand five hundred, which will just stop the descent there because there's no point going any lower. Check. So should, um, it'll say low starred when it's capturing the localizer, and then when it goes to just low, that means it's captured the localizer, and it's tracking the localizer fairly effectively. You'll notice it's also alt starred right now, which means it's capturing the altitude. And then it's going to level off at exactly 2500, and that'll say alt, which it just has there, 
So that's it saying I'm level now. I'm in altitude hold mode. I'm not in altitude capture mode or localizer capture mode or speed capture mode. There we go. Radar's now kicked in. Here comes the city of Dubai out of the smoke. I'm going to put it down to the 10 mile scale. Uh, I'd expect to start picking up the ILS in about uh, 4 miles. Again, the audio is gone off because I just want to look at the chart. And Pudka, which is the normal intercept point, or sorry, glide slope intercept point, is at 60 ME. And that's at 2,000 feet. The glide path is a standard 3 degree glide path. So there's no chance of that being an issue on this flight. As you can see, I've been in the air for about 45 minutes now. It's saying more drag. I'm going to disregard that because I I know better than it does right now. Uh, I'm actually going to pull speed to 200 just because I am a little bit nervous of thundering in too fast. And then I'll slack flap two. Oh shucks, flaps one, flaps two. There we go. Um, the bindings that I ha that I used to have are different to the ones I've got now, so I occasionally got the wrong one. You can hear how much extra power we've got going on just to keep us at this speed. There we go. That's our um, flight slope alive now. There's the airport in sight. We're now at nine miles. So I'm just going to slow straight to 146, which was our VRF for this approach. Or VAPP, sorry. Now we're going to get ready for the approach checks. So, auto brakes, I'm going to set those to medium. Gear is going to come down the second that glide slope captures. Glide slope check to lap three. Speed check, flaps four. Now, as you can see, we're just doing low drag. Gear down. down. Now, landing ECAM, auto brakes medium. Spoilers are armed, flaps full. We're ready for the approach. So you can see the aircraft, as I say, is thundering in at this stage but we're fully idle and there's the runway we're landing on yeah landing left hand so we've got one have to stop before we cross the right hand set flaps and landing while they're in landing configuration right now mate landing checklist landing here down and locked three greens ground spoilers checked and armed Auto brakes. medium exterior lights on go around altitude checked Landing memo. Checked. No blue. Check this complete. Right, so what I'm going to do is that's roughly 1,500 feet. Autopilot can come out now. So you have to right click it in the sky bus. And then you just hit the master warning. And if you, uh, if you do fly in an airbus and you're in about the front half of the aircraft, you can hear the autopilot coming off on approach. So we're getting a little bit below, you can see there, because of the way, uh, just the way the aircraft flies. However, I'm just going fully visual. I'm actually staring at the runway right now. And I'm just looking at the, the, what, what we call the papier lights, which are the red and white lights, either side of the runway. Now we aim to touch down with the main wheels at about the level of those lights. Um, I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to commentate what I'm, do, what I'm looking at and what I'm doing with my hands for the duration of this approach. So get ready. Uh, as I say, well, I'm, my, I'm, I'm currently staring roughly uh, at the tarmac just between the two pappies and looking to keep the image I've got now. I'm also looking to see that both si the white lines at the side of the runway look roughly the same length because that will then tell me if I'm left or right of the centre line. As you can see by looking at the localizer indicator, I'm actually bang central, which you can also see by looking out the window. I'm a little bit on the low side, but that's no big deal. Um, because if you look at, again at the glide slope, that's... Uh, telling me I'm about, that'll be about 10 feet lower than I should be, which is, I guess, as I say, no big deal. 500. 500 feet. We're, we're stable, so we're on VREF. We're not doing crazy manoeuvring trying to get lined up, but we are getting slightly high because I've reduced the, the VREF, the rate of descent, sorry. So again, we're descending quite steeply here. Probably a bit too steeply. 300. I'm a little bit displaced to the left of centre line. I'm just going to gently try and correct. 200. 100 above. Perhaps we screwed this up. One hundred minimum. Pulling the throttle off. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. There we go. If we bounce, no, we haven't bounced. Ground spoilers are deployed. Reverse three. 
check and I'm now just looking to keep myself central on the runway So I've just stood the reverses now, I'm taking off a manual braking off the aircraft. Now I've botched that a little bit towards the end but I'm actually quite impressed by how unset line I am at this stage. We'll vacate right. Leave the runway, okay. Probably a little bit fast there. Yeah, wah -ha, very fast. Come on. Right, we've got to stop. So the, the um, first officer's cleaned us up, so she's retracted the flaps After landing and stowed the spoilers. I just deployed the flaps back. So now we'll pretend we're clear to cross this Set runway. Set off. And we're actually just going to go to one of the stands Check straight in front of us. So I'll just very quickly select engine one off, which you can see if you're not careful will cause you to do that. But uh, it is actually a favourable manoeuvre, this, that we taxi the aircraft on one engine because it burns about 20% less fuel than if we use both engines. You can hear the PTU there, which is basically having to... Now, the hydraulic pump on the right-hand engine is having to also accommodate all the hydraulics from the number two. Uh, so, yeah, the right hand's doing both hydraulics for one and engines one and two. This stand with the, the dual air bridges, that's where we're going. Again, we've got no uh, GSX today because it's broken. And I'm just going to brake and just chicane us into the stand. Stand Foxer at 14. We'll pretend that was assigned to us by ATC. You can see I've actually got the, the thrust levers fully closed and the aircraft's still got a, a large amount of energy. Now I'm just looking to to roughly keep the centre line entering stand and look onto the outside view for the parking. I'm, I'm thundering in quite fast into the parking area. And we'll just stop the aircraft there. Park brake is set. So alright, it's actually telling me I'm a little bit too far back, but I'm not. I'm happy with where I'm parked. Uh, we'll just check for ch what the checklists say we can do at this stage. And that's options for the checklist. Oops. Uh, checklist. Okay, it doesn't actually cover the landing checks, but that's, that's fine. We'll just take number two off. APU is available. APU bleed comes on so that the passengers don't start uh, boiling to death in the back. Beacon light comes off. Taxi light comes off. Seatbelt sign out comes off. Air bridge doesn't actually work at this scenery, I don't think, does it? No, it doesn't. It's not moving. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for this arrival. So, guys, that was the basic... That was the um, first officer level of training. Lesson 2 for the uh, Qatar Airlines Airbus A321. In the next lesson, we're going to look at something a little bit more advanced. Uh, we'll probably take the A320 out. And we'll probably have a look at somewhere... Uh, well, I'm planning to do product draw striver which will include a uh, BOR approach, which will be quite interesting. So, until then, guys, that's it from me. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye!